So far, we've talked about how to build chords like triads and seventh chords. If you want to review those videos, I'll put a link to them in the description below. The next thing I want to talk about is chord voicing. In Western music theory, there are two main types of voicing, open and close. The main difference between open and close chords is the literal space between the notes on the staff. The rule of thumb is that a chord that has notes that are more than an octave apart is an open chord. This means that chords that have notes that are less than an octave apart, for example, this chord, F A C, is a closed chord because all of the notes in the chord fit within one octave. The lowest note is F, and one octave above that is this F. And all of the notes of the chord are within that one octave. So this is a closed chord. Now, if we use that same chord and move the notes around a little bit, we now have an open chord. Because the lowest note is C, and one octave above that is this C, and there is one note that is outside of this one octave range. So we can call this an open chord. Both of these chords use the same notes, F, A, and C. An F major chord. Both of these are F major chords. One is a closed chord because all the notes fit within one octave, and the other is an open chord because all the notes do not fit within the one octave. Let's take a closer look at closed voicing. Closed voicing is also sometimes called keyboard voicing because most keyboard music is written so that the notes of a chord aren't more than an octave apart because it's easier for the keyboard player to play it that way. The average human hand can reach an octave on the keyboard, but once you start going over that interval, it gets harder and harder for the keyboard player to reach those notes. So in this example, we have this chord progression. If we look at each of the chords, they're all within one octave of each chord's lowest note. So we know that these are all closed chords. As you can see, a closed chord does not have to be in root position. It can be in first or second inversion and still be a closed chord. It's a closed chord as long as all the notes stay within that one octave range. Now let's look at open chords. One easy way to get from closed chords to open chords is to swap the highest and lowest note of the chord. For example, in this closed chord, we have F, A, and C. If we swap the F and the C around to make a new chord, first we'll keep the A in the same spot. It doesn't move. Next we'll take the C and move it below the A. So the C below this A would be this C. And finally, we move the F above the A, so the F above this A would be this F. Now, let's check our work real quick to make sure we have an open chord. The lowest note in the new chord is C, and one octave above that is this C. And we do have a note outside of that octave range, so that means this is an open chord. So to get from closed chords to open chords, all you have to do is swap the highest and lowest note in the chord. If we go back to the closed chord example and swap all of the highest and lowest notes, we get this. And now we have the same chord progression, but now it's in open chords. Thanks for watching! If you want to practice writing open and closed chords, I made a worksheet for my patrons that you can download from my Patreon page. If you're not a patron, you can learn more about becoming a patron at this Patreon link. 
and also in the description below. Thank you.